Uh, this is the uh, first part of a couple of related videos about charge and charge transfer. So I've got a PowerPoint here that I use certain years, made this many years ago. And uh, I'll just, I thought I would go through it um, and then pause after a few minutes and then start a second video. So I don't have one super long video, but um, what you see here is uh, some uh, historic figures. You probably heard of most of these people that played an important role in the discovery of charge and how charge was transferred around. Um, a lot of this stuff you'll know from chemistry. Um, you know, uh, chemistry, of course, is, you know, all, all of chemistry is predicated about understanding about how charge moves around and where it goes and stuff like that. But um, let's uh, review. Some of, this, some of this is new, maybe, but most of it should be in your wheelhouse. The fact that it comes in two different flavors, you know, positive and negative. I think everybody knows that already. And the basic rules there that uh, positives repel positives, negatives repel negatives, and opposites attract, right? I think that's stuff that people have known probably since elementary school. Uh, the thing that usually doesn't come up till physics is the actual units, right? In chemistry class, they're just counting basically, you know, how many electrons you're short or how many extra electrons you have. So they're just counting plus or minus ones. Uh, but of course, it is uh, a quantity that can be measured, and therefore it does have units. And uh, they were named after one of the early pioneers, um, a Frenchman named Monsieur Coulomb. So Coulombs are the unit of charge, uh, capital C. And the other thing uh, that you probably knew but didn't think about it this way is the last bullet point here is that charge is quantized. So, um, you know, when you were counting in chemistry class about how many electrons you were gaining or losing, uh, there were never any fractions, right? You never got half an electron, right? It was always a whole electron or uh, extra or a whole electron short. And same thing for protons as well. And so um, the fancy and rigorous way of talking about that fact that there are no fractions um, is to say that it is quantized, right? So here's a question about the meaning of quantized. So why don't you take a second and look over this. Um, which of these choices uh, best represents what the word quantized means in physics? Right, so um, it actually means all of these things, right? So if you subdivide a quantity of something that is quantized, like charge, you eventually will find that there is a lowest, um, smallest unit that cannot be further subdivided. And so all macroscopic uh, quantities of charge or anything that's quantized is made up of a countable and discrete integer number of those small units. So in this case, it would be like the, the fundamental charge is the one that appears on electron with a negative sign and appears on a proton with a positive sign. That is the quantum of charge. And this is the number right here. Uh, so the charge on electron is uh, 1.6 times 10 to minus 19th coulombs with a negative sign, right? Because it's the negative charge carrier. And the proton, of course, has an equal and opposite. So it's positive 1.6 times 10 to minus 19th coulombs. So it's really kind of an unfortunate historical accident that when Coulomb was doing his original experiments measuring charge, uh, nobody had any idea of, how, of the fact that it was quantized. They didn't even know necessarily that it came in two different types. Um, and they made all these macroscopic measurements. And then eventually when we discovered that um, it was carried around on these really tiny subatomic particles, it turns out that the units that we had been using are atrociously large, right? So that's why the quantum of charge is such a small number. In a way, the chemists are keeping it much simpler by just you know making the quantum of charge an electron minus one and the proton plus one. But um, of course, that is a dimensionless number. And so it's, it's not quite right. Um, so that does mean that every time you, uh, you know, run an electrical appliance or you get zapped or you see a lightning bolt, right, it is an integer number of this very, very small number. And the fact that it is so small, of course, is why it's not obvious. And it was not obvious to anybody in the, in the first few slides that it was, um, that it was quantized. Um, if you are taking steps, right, the smallest step is going to be um, the size of a quantum of charge. And uh, if it's that small, 10 to the minus 19th you know, then really there's no way of telling the difference between a staircase with the step size that small and just a nice smooth ramp, right? So people like Benjamin Franklin, they, they had no idea, right, that, that it was made out of tiny individual particles. So if you have an, a, here's a situation, right? So like, it, this is a 
classic amount of charge that might be transferred when you say scuff your feet on a rug, pick up some charge, and then you zap yourself on a doorknob or something. Uh, you might be that little spark there that you feel might be about 1.6 micro coulombs, right? So 1.6 times 10 to the minus sixth coulombs. So how many electrons were actually uh, jumping off of your finger onto the doorknob? And so the answer here is you would have to take that whole amount of charge and divide it by the smallest unit, which is that charge on electron, that's this number back here, 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19th. So take 1.6 times 10 to the minus 6th, divide it by 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19th, so the 1.6 cancels out. And I believe it's 10 to the 13th. I, don't know. I didn't actually calculate this, but that seems right, right? 10 to the minus 6 divided by 10 to the minus 19th, yeah, 10 to the 13th. Oh, <laughs> there's the math. I forgot I did the math for you here. Okay. So uh, what we now know that they didn't know back then is that, right, the atoms that are mostly neutral, right, most atoms in the world are neutral. Uh, they're not neutral because they don't have charge in them. They're neutral because they have an equal amount of positive and negative charges. And furthermore, we know that the positive charges are tucked away deep inside in the nucleus. And... Um, the, the nucleus is held together by these really strong nuclear bonds. Uh, the electrons, on the other hand, are what are making the outer surface of the atom, right? Those electron clouds. And so when you're talking about charge transfer from an individual um, atom, or in most cases, you're talking about the transfer of electrons, right? For the simple practical reason that the negative charges are available to be plucked off on those um, outer valence shells. Um, and it's not the positive charges that get moved around. It's sometimes convenient to track a positive charge. For instance, if you have an atom that's short an electron, it will have an overall positive charge, and you could watch that, you know, that atom move around in, in say, a fluid or something like that and talk about the flow of positive charges. But uh, most of the time, right, charge transfer is accomplished by transferring negative charges around. Yeah, so here's, a, here's an important point, though. Uh, if you don't know... <laughs> what the charge carrier is, like Benjamin Franklin and all those guys, and uh, the charge carriers themselves are so small that you cannot actually weigh uh, the difference, at least not easily, then the difference between losing an electron or gaining uh, a positive charge really is kind of moot. So if you look at this picture, right, I've got, I'm showing a negative charge moving to the right, so that's gonna mean that the left-hand side of the page over here is gonna be short an electron, and over here, they're going to be gaining electron, right? So this side of the page that's losing electron will now be positively charged, and this side over here that's gaining it will now be negatively charged. Well, that's the same net effect if we had a positive charge going from right to left, right? If the right-hand side of the page is moving, is losing a positive charge, then it will become negative. And then over here, where on the left-hand side, where they gained a positive charge, it will become positive. And so these two pictures are really actually very hard to tell apart unless you can actually sort of catch the charge and transfer or like actually weigh very carefully the amount of mass here before and after the charge transfer. None of those tricks were available to these early scientists. Benjamin Franklin himself um, just guessed that it was positive charge moving around. He didn't even know if their negative charges existed. He just thought negative charge might be the lack of positive charge. And so he described everything in terms of this bottom picture here with positive charges moving around. And unfortunately, um, we still do that to this day, right? That's just societal inertia, right? We're used to talking about it. The original literature talked about positive charges moving around. And so to this day, electricians will talk about current as being the flow of positive charges down a wire, when of course that is completely bogus, right? It's, it's negative charges going the other way. But if you really look at this picture and understand it, you will realize that um, there's not really much of a problem in thinking about it as positive charges going the other way until you get microscopic and you actually want to worry about which direction things are going. Okay, I'm going to pause here.